Need to be done with this one. So welcome to class, everybody. So today is actually uh, the end of our two weeks and CTA class, mega trading class that I've been taking you guys. So I know we've actually is more than two weeks, but I want to make sure that, and I want to believe that the class is actually worth it. So during the course of the uh, mega trading class, I've uh, made mention of some topics which I'm going to list out first before we now talk on briefly on each of them. I said the first thing we firstly uh, talked about is why trading, which is what, like, it's what is expected of you as a trader and what are the trades that we take. Do you understand? So the next thing that we talked about is importance of trading or the benefits of trading. So later we move to ways or how you can use your technical analysis skills to make money and to make wealth for yourself. From there, we move to type of analysis. Then I talked about trading view navigation. I talked about exchanges navigation. We talked about market structure. From there, we move to, um, from market structure, we move to uh, Fibonacci retracement. Fibonacci retracement from there. Sorry, Fibonacci one, two, and three. So from there we move to um, various supply and demand zones. Various supply and demand zones. I think that was our last class. So before the two weeks elapsed. So I'm going to be touching everyone, every aspect faster, as fast as possible. So when I talked about what is expected of you as a trader, I said that as a trader, you have to work to sacrifice some things. You have to have that, that will that you want to actually make it through trading and have that belief that you can make it A lot of young folks out there have actually made it through trading. So believe that you can make it through trading too. So that's that about the trade. That's what I said we trade the financial market. So as if you have the skills of a technical uh, of technical analysis, just like uh, rice traders that sell rice, beans traders that sell beans in our normal market, in our more normal physical market, as a technical trader, what are the type of markets or various markets that uh, You can venture into you can venture into forex you can venture into crypto you can venture into s p 500 you can venture into what into stocks anyone that you understand but the most common one and the one that is very important these days that you can and that is our benefits of trading i told you the benefits of trading i said the financial freedom the luxury lifestyle the the opportunities the doors that it opens for you are actually numerous and you can't stop counting it because when you, when you think it is over or when you think you've seen it all, you still see that, okay, there's still another thing that you can create from it. You just need to be able to be innovative, to be creative, open your heart, open your mind to see it. What are the possibilities? And you'll be seeing it. And you'll be seeing it. So that is that. about that then i still talk about what ways or how you can use your technical skills so i talked about the ways or, or how to use your uh, technical skills to make money that's after you allow now a what a a trader that you actually know that okay you've actually acquired these skills and not like half knowledge or something okay, so i said what are the ways that, that you can make money actually nobody will tell you this no idolo will tell you this because that's what they are using to make their money but I'm here telling you everything, revealing everything to you, that if you actually have these skills, there are actually various ways you can use to make money. If you already have the skill already, 
I'm actually opening your eyes to see it now. So once you if if you think that okay, you've actually seen it or you don't know how to go about it, you are tired. I'm telling you that there are ways you can use that skill you have to make money. One is the market will be paying you. If you sit down very well, you will dedicate your time to it. Because what you don't give time will not actually pay you. So when you dedicate your time to it, you are going to be making money from the market. So the market can be paying you. What are the extra source of incomes? Like to 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 turn. If you have if you are very good and you know how to teach people, and you can actually uh, undergo the the sacrifice of separating your time like every night to teach people. There's no how no how you are going to see one or two people that are actually eager and are hungry to learn this particular technical analysis skills. So you can make money from there. Another thing is that if you are actually good and people see that you are good, uh, exchanges will notice you. People will notice you. They will recommend you to investors. Exchanges will notice you. Um, um, they, will, they will ask you, okay, well, can you be our athlete? Help us to promote this particular uh, uh, our exchange. If it is Binance, if it is Bybit, if it is, uh, we have a lot of problem accounts now. Do you understand? So from there, you, from there you can be making money. I talk about athletes too. Athletes where you partner with uh, different different trading academy, tra different trading uh, platforms, and they are going to be paying you. Do you understand? So there is no limit to how much you can earn as a what as a trader, and you having you with only you having the, what the technical skills. Then I talk about type of analysis. I said there are various type of analysis, but we have four basic major type of analysis. And what are the four basic major type of analysis? I said we have fundamental analysis, we have sentimental analysis, we have um, on-chain analysis, and we have what technical analysis. So there is also one particular type of analysis that I want to chip in, which is what we call top um, top down analysis. Top down analysis. So when we say when we say when we say fundamental analysis, it deals with what with news majorly. But when we say fundamental analysis, what is actually happening concerning the coin or that particular exchange currency that you are trading at that particular point that is present? So I said we have two type of fundamental analysis. We have quantitative analysis and we have qualitative analysis. When we say quantitative analysis, it means that what it deals with what the quality. It deals with the characteristics. Example, if they say this particular coin, look at the day that they said XRP won the court case. What happened? XRP started from 0 0.4 something, went to what? 0 0.8 something. I think that it did over 100 percent, 130 something percent. Do you understand? So that would, those ones deals with what? With uh, news around the market, this around the coin, it deals with partnership. Maybe you win a court case. Maybe they say they listed one particular coin on this exchange. They listed one particular coin on OpenSea. Just an example, um, ETC like that. You know, that's, that's qualitative, quant, quali, quantitative, uh, qualitative analysis. But when we now say quantitative analysis, quantitative, just like our secondary school, we thought we learned something we call quantitative. When we say quantitative reasoning, it means it deals with what? With numbers. But verbal reasoning, it deals with what? It deals with uh, English language and the likes like that. You understand? So when we say quantitative type of fundamental analysis, we meant what the um, fundamental analysis or news that is in form of what? In form of numbers. It deals with numbers. It deals with rates. It deals with percentages. Example is all the CPI news, FOMC news, NFP news, all those ones. Uh, what it refers to are what? Um, quantitative type of fundamental analysis. I talk about sentimental analysis. When we say sentimental analysis, it deals with what the market sentiment, what each and every participant in the market is thinking about the market. Is everybody saying the market is going up or everybody saying the market is coming down? And when we say for sentimental analysis, uh, it deals with emotion, like how, the how everybody is reacting in the market. 
and we have tools that we use to measure sentimental analysis. The, the two major tools that we use to measure sentimental analysis is um is fear and greed index and, and bitcoin dominance. Fear and greed index and bitcoin dominance. I have actually re uh, released the video on fear and greed index and Bitcoin dominance, so you can check YouTube channel to actually watch more on that. So I talked about um, on-chain analysis. When I say on-chain analysis, it means that what we are actually tracking whales, big whales. We are tracking their wallets. So this one is not actually very common in trading, but we have that type of analysis. I want you to know that we have that type of analysis so that you won't be like a novice when you are actually among your peers and you are talking about analysis. So when we say um, on-chain analysis, it deals with what? Tracking of whales wallet. Okay, he bought. Once you see that I bought this particular coin, you see, you could what go and buy for the coins that's pumping but this one i'm not very conversant with it and people that use it are defi traders most importantly are defi traders so they will take the rejecting wallets up and that contributes that contributes a larger percentage of uh, traders with traders um analysis is what we first as what technical analysis and when we are saying technical analysis it means we are analyzing we are looking at the the price action the history of the price action of a particular coin that is represented in form of what charts, represented in form of candlesticks to know what will happen to the price of that coin in the future. Do you understand? So that's it. If you see that, okay, this particular coin, once it gets to $2, it's always drop. Once it gets to $2, it's always drop. You're analyzing that presently. You've seen that history. So you can use it that, okay, in the future, once you get, and you see that the market is at $1.5, you'll be like, okay, once you get to two dollars, it's expected to drop. So you shut the market from there. Do you understand? So that's how majorly how the technical what technical analysis is all about. But this technical analysis actually has different different subgroups or has different different um rooms or different different subtopics, which are I've actually take taking you through some, but due to our time and due to the uh, span of the class we are unable to, uh, to finish it so the the subtopics includes we have a market structure we have the fibonacci we have the various supply and demand zones we have area of liquidity we have area of liquidity voids you understand we have risk management aspect where we're talking about position sizing we're talking about uh, entry stop loss take profit capital preservation then we're talking about market psychology how to deal with psychology how to deal with the emotions like that, like that. So that's that aspect of what technical analysis. But I've taken you through some aspects, which is which includes what market structure. I said if we are talking about market structure, it means the foundation of what of analysis. If the foundation is destroyed, I said that what what can the righteous do? So if the foundation is if if the found if we are if we are trying to draw an analysis of what of um a skyscraper so it, therefore you must not be given a foundational a foundation of of a two story building or of a bungalow so your your analysis your foundation must be strong you must understand this particular uh, foundational analysis very well because as small as it is as 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 big as um simple as it looks you have to understand it very well because you getting it very well will actually make you toward to know uh, other type of analysis and um, to build up on that uh, technical analysis skills as we progress. Do you understand? So I now said the market structure actually, in in summary, consists of three things, which is which is what support, resistance, and trend line. I said support is that what that zone or that area that once price gets to that place is expected to, uh, to rebound up. And when we say resistance, is that area or that zone that once price gets to that place is, is expected to, uh, to fall down. Do you understand? So then we say trend line. 
I said the trend line we used to know to know the trend in the market and made whether we are in uptrend, in a downtrend, or a sideways. And I told you that what there is a rule in market structure. And the rule is that always make trend your friend. Follow the trend. We are in uptrend. What you should be looking for is a buy opportunity or a long opportunity. If we are in a downtrend, you should be looking for a what? A short opportunity or a what? A sell opportunity. If we are in sideways, if the market is in sideways, that is, is ranging, is consolidating, what do you do? You don't trade at all. You sit on your hands. You don't trade at all. Do you understand? So that's that about that. Then I said that the component of market structure, we actually have four components of market structure that you must look at critically before you can say, okay, this thing is in the downtrend or this thing is in the uptrend. So that's what higher high, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows. So higher highs and higher lows. Higher is the one that is starting it. And when we say something high, it means what uptrend. Do you understand? So you must understand higher high, higher low, higher lower high, lower low before you can say what. Uh, the market is in a downtrend or in what in an uptrend. So after the, the market structure, we talked about the what the Fibonacci levels. Talked about the Fibonacci levels. So in the Fibonacci, I say we have three types of Fibonacci. We have Fibonacci extension, we have Fibonacci expansion, and we have Fibonacci uh, um, retracement. I said Fibonacci extension and expansion, just like the name. They are very similar, I said extension, expansion. So we used to know the span of how the markets will run. How will the trend run? Like, what's the limit of the, the trend to run to before what? Before the market, the market will start retracing. So we say we use the Fibonacci extension and expansion for what? To take profits. Why the Fibonacci retracement? This is where I actually delve into more where and I, I spent most of my time on which is the Fibonacci retracement because you have to know if you know the perfect place to enter the market, you are going to be making profits. Do you understand? The reason why people are making loss is because you don't enter the market where you are supposed to enter. Some people, the market will have taken them out before the market will now go in the direction they are supposed to go. Why? Because maybe they enter early. And the market might not actually take you at times, and the market will play out, and you'll be you'll be paid missed entry. Why? Because they entered late. Do you understand? So that's why I took my time on what Fibonacci retracement. I said we use the Fibonacci retracement for what for entry. Do you understand? We use the Fibonacci retracement for entry. And I said we have different Fibonacci retracement levels. We have up to ten. If you look, if you draw your Fibonacci um tools so as you see zero you see 0 0.21 0 0.31 0 0.5 0 0.618 0 0.705 0 0.8 something something and one then after one we have 1.2 something something like that like that like that but i told you that the four important ones that i use for my strategy i use what zero level the one level the 0 0.61 its level and what is 0 0.705 level. Now, where do I use to enter the market? I, I would draw. If you are in uptrend, you look for the lowest swing and the highest swing. So I would draw from the what from the lowest and draw it to the what to the highest swing. If you are in what downtrend, you will draw from what from the highest swing, you now extend it to what the Lower now, uh, where do we now enter this? I said to you, two places, the, the place we enter the market is what? Uh, 0 0.61. I left that is OC in case you see it in any textbook or in any of these uh, dollar traders. So it means what? Optimal trade entry. You understand? So optimal trade. So when you enter the market from there, you are going to set, set your stop loss at what? Very below. Below, like, or after the what is 0 0.705 level. Do you understand? So, that's that about that. And I told you that what we use this Fibonacci retracement to do, most important, we say we use it to enter the market. Now, if the market is in a bull run, or maybe the market is in a uptrend, like it was just the trend just continued, there's a major trend, there's a huge trend, and you want to catch the trend too, but you don't want to FOMO into the market blindly. So, you just use it to draw it. Then you wait patiently for the market to come and pick you at that place. 
then you too, you now make your profit. Do you understand? So you don't need to and to enjoy the party with everybody. Allow the market to come down to pick you. Then you too, you cannot enjoy your what your party separate. That's that's about that. Then I talk about the supply and demand zones. I say supply zones means where you the area or the various zones where you can sell the market from or short the market from. And I say the um the demand zones. Demand zones include what where you can what buy the market from, where you can buy from or where you can long the market from. I said there are various strategies in trading. There are various strategies in trading. Therefore, there are various there are various traders in the market. Therefore, there are various strategies in the in the in trading. Hence, there are various supply and demand zones. But the common supply and demand zones include what our normal support and resistance, the Fibonacci retracement levels. We have the area of liquidity. We have other blocks. We have uh, we have other blocks. We have liquidity voids. Hmm? So we've already trashed what supply and, and support and resistance is. We know what um supply and demand are we uh Fibonacci retracement to is. Then we we'll now move towards other blocks. I say when we are talking about other blocks, we have two types of other blocks. We have bullish order block and bearish order block. And I told you that the bullish order block is where you are. The bullish order block is where you long the market from. That is like a support zone. Why the bearish order block is where you sell the market from. It's like what? A supply zone. Now, I now say what is a bullish order block? A bullish order block is the that green candle before the impulsive red candles that did break of structure. You watch the video on supply and demand zones, so you are going to know what I'm actually talking about, though I'm still going to show you today. Then when we are saying a bearish order block, bearish, just like name, bearish, it means the candle that we want to short the market from is what is red. So the, the last red candle before the impulsive green candles that did break of structure, is what refers to as what bearish other blocks. So is a what is an example of supply zone. Now these other blocks is not that every other block that you see that you must trade. There are some what there are some features of other block that you must know before you can say okay I want to use this one to trade. This one I cannot use it to trade. So but due to our time we cannot actually incorporate everything. I cannot tell you everything due to our time. Do you understand? But if you want to know more, once you pay for the uh, advanced class, you are going to learn more. Okay, this one I can trade it. This one I cannot trade it. Do you understand? So that's that about that. Then I now talked about what liquidity areas. I said there are various levels of liquidity. Liquidity is not one class. It's not two class. So it's something that is actually um wide. It's very wide and very deep. There are some traders that only what they trade is liquidity. Do you understand? So it's not something that I can just dive into in the revision class like this. But I will look for, uh, uh, mm, we'll see what we can do. But people that are, that are going to continue the class with me, will show, I will surely take them the liquidity. Then we have to lean, well, you have to know it that, okay, the liquidity points are also part of what supply and demand zones. We have various types of liquidities. We have buy side liquidity. We have sell side liquidity. Inter-market inter liquidity, a lot of liquidity, do you understand? So it's not something that we can use one class to take. Then we have um, liquidity voids, that is area that are devoid of liquidity. Example is what? Imbalance, inefficiencies, fair value gaps, all these things are actually a, a Concepts that we need to delve into very well. Do you understand? But due to our time, so but you must know that okay, the area of liquidity were also part of what supply and demand zones. So let me show you an example of what we've done in the past. So let's just look at the charts we try once again so that you, everything will still be fresh on your head. So this is trading view. So this trading view, now look at it. Look at this 
So this, when I'm saying liquidity, part of it, look at it. And you see that I actually use liquidity to trade this market. If you are seeing dollar dollar, it means liquidity. So I use liquidity to trade this market and I make profits. Can you see? That's it. Now you can it depends on okay. You have to be to know everything about the market, like everything about a particular concept. I'm actually teaching you a particular concept. I will advise you that you know everything about this particular concept so that you don't need to go and still start from another person because that person will still teach you what another strategy entirely. Do you understand? So that's why look at and I use the key strategy. I use key strategy. So that kiss means K I S S. Kiss. Just like love, like kiss strategy, K I S S. And what does it mean? It means keeping it short and simple. My strategies are very simple. That you can even clap it. But the thing is that you can see, you think that you can clap it just by looking at my chat. But if I don't explain some things to you, you might not actually understand it. But it's very simple. My students, I take them two weeks. They are already on fire. Do you understand? So uh, what I've taught you in the past, you can see that this thing is actually on what? On a down on downtrend and is running. So you can use your Fibonacci retracement, carry your Fib, then what? Click on it from this up. From this up and click it down. You see, you start from up, then take it down. Do you understand? So now it means you are going to short the market from where from this point 0 0.618 so you are going to short the market from here so once you short the market from this place from this place so you set your what you set your take profit and uh, your stop loss just a little bit below a bit above this what 0 0.786 line do you understand says above 0 0.768 line so now so that that about how to use what with natural retracement you see that this thing is actually in the what in a complete down, you see now it's running down. Some people will just say, okay, they are, Bitcoin is rugging, Bitcoin is rugging, they will just enter. So they might enter at this place. Can you see the market later went up? So we took them, take them out, then the market to continue in its way. You understand? Some people might actually enter in this place. You see that the market has actually taken them out because the market went up more than what they thought. Do you understand? So that's that about that. Whereas the market is trying to build up to go to where that line that you, you have been waiting for it then to short. Do you understand? So that's that about us. But me, I've already made the prof profit using what? Part of my uh, knowledge or strategy, which is what? Part of the liquidity. I think I shorted from this line, from this line. So you can see that, look at the profit. So that's that about that. So look at, so I taught you support and resistance too. I taught you support and resistance. So how do we draw support? How do we draw resistance? I say if we are drawing support and resistance, support is that area that once market gets to that place, it will rebound up, right? And I said that for you to say, okay, this is support or this is a resistance, it must touch, like the swing points must touch at least two or three words or three swing points. Mm -hmm. So look at it. Consider this is an example of a support. You see, the market was coming up. The market was coming down. It touched this place, went up. Touched this place, went up. Touched it, went up. It touched it, went up. So you can see that this place is actually what a support. So some people that can, that use support to trade, you know that if you put, as the market is coming once again, if you enter the market on this line, which is support, you see that you're actually being in profit. Can you see it? So it touched this place again, which is the support, and the market was rebound. Because support is that area that once market gets to that place, it's expected to, work, to come down. Do you understand? Look at, I drew this resistance too. I drew this resistance place. Look at this resistance. I think you get this. So look at the market from here. It went, came down. The market was coming. It came to this line. It then went down. Hmm? So look at it. The market came to this line again. This horizontal line that I drew, it still went down again. Do you understand? Before the market now later what? Finally broke it up very well. You understand? So, but you can see that anywhere that the market touch more than two or three times is the what the support the resistance zone once market gets to that place it's going to come down 
So look at this particular trade. Look at this particular trade. I, uh, we, you can use the the Fibonacci retracement. So look at this. Look at this one. This this area. You can see that the market is on the run from this move. The market was on the run down. So look at it. Carry off Fibonacci retracement. Fibonacci. So the market is on the run down. So carry it from here. Hmm? Then draw it down to the lowest point. Can you see that? What Hello, who is this person that you know? So look at it. So look at this line that I drew. This Fibonacci that I just drew for you now. You see that from up, then you drew to the what? Sorry. So can you see? Let me draw it again for you. Carry off Fibonacci to Fibonacci retracement. See from top here. So draw it down to the lower swing. As it has not reached the L, it still remains small. So can you see? So you know what? It means you must short from this area. So you see that. The market has come down. Then the market starts building up, building up, building up. Then the market later touched this 0 0.6 area and the market was came down. Look at the profits. The market touched the place, the market came down. You see, you are going to enjoy this profit. But that's the same way in this place, too. The same way in this place, too. The same way in this place, too. You see, you draw it from up down. Once the market gets there, then now I think this one did not hold. This one did not hold. As we drew from up till down, look at this wave it started rally from. Then you draw it down. So this is the 0 0.618 level. The markets, as the markets went up, the market did not respect it and went up. The thing is that not everything plays out. Always have that belief. Do you understand? Always have that belief. Not everything always play out. Do you understand? Then now, if it didn't play out, you have to understand why didn't it play out? You must know that reason before you can move on. Do you understand? So now let's look at this one. Look at this place. You see that the market is on a run from this place. It went round up, right? So you are going to the way you draw your Fibonacci retracement is from what you carry it. Where is your Fibonacci retracement? Carry it from the what lowest point. Hmm? So you draw it up to the highest. So you see, so it means you are you are planning toward to long the market from here. You can see that the market actually went up. Then it touched once it touched the line, the market went up. You see that you actually made made profit from here. You understand? That is from here to here, you've already made profit. Then before the market now start coming down, when the market was coming down, what did you respect the other the next time? The actually market actually respect this what other block that is here. Let me show you the other block. I say this this other block is it a bullish other block or a bearish other block? It's actually a bullish other block. That is the last red candle before the what impulsive green candles. Can you see the impulsive green candles that did break our structure? You see that it actually broke the, the previous high that is there. You see, it broke the previous high that is there. So you can see this green candle was rally, it rallied up. So the last you carry the last red candle that you see here. So we carry the last red candle, you draw your rectangle. What happened? You see that the market actually came, you tap it, went off, tap it. Then the market now what went off very well. So can you see there's a profit here now? You'll have made your profit in this particular place. Can you see? So you'll have made profit. 
So the market is, is simple. You just need to understand the concepts. Once you understand the concept, you see that there, there, there are limits to how much you just work. You just lose in the market like that blindly. Do you understand? So that's that about that. So what else? What else did we talk about? What else did we talk about? I'm sorry. Let's look at all that things. Maybe let's look at this here. Let's look at this here. So look at this near like this. So Look at this place. You can see that this is a what a bullish order block. This is a bullish order block. This is a bullish order block. So you are going to draw it. This like there is a break of structure here. So you are going to carry what the last red candle before the impulsive green candles. You see. So you are going to carry from here. So you are expecting that as the market touch this place, the market should go up. Did the market went up? It so actually went up a little just a little before it broke it. So it's it's telling us that what there are some things you consider too. You know, I told you it's not other not all other blocks that you see that you trade. Do you understand? Not all other blocks that you see that you must trade. So there are levels to it. Now look at this other block now that we are seeing here. You see that this is what a bearish other block, the last red candle. The last bearish, the last green candle before the what before the impulsive what red candles. So the, this is this other block. Let me draw it very well. I think maybe I saw it for on the four hour time. Let me see the four hour time frame. So look look at it. Before the impossible red candles that did break of structure. So, can you see the candle? Can you see it? See it? Yeah. You see it here now. The last green candle before the what the red candles that did what break on it in this place. So short network in centimeters. So you see that if you place your short, So you see that if you place your short in this place, let me delete this one. If you place your short, you know you've seen the this thing. So you place your short, see the profits you'll have made. See that you can see a lot of profits that was made. Do you see it? So that's that about uh trading. So can you see it? So can you see it? So that's that about it. So look at it. So it works. It works. All the strategy that I've taught you actually works if you put in the work. Do you understand? So that's that about that. So thank you very much. Then we talk about fair value gap. We talked about liquidity. But because of our time, we were not able to work to actually do the practical aspect of some of the liquidity. So we are going to continue in the what in the class. So thank you very much, everyone. So telegram. So any question, any question, any question. I'm sure we've learned one or two things throughout these two weeks. Have we learned something? Let me hear you.
Yeah, we lost. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are very, very grateful, sir. You are welcome. You are welcome. So I'm going to really, I'm going to send. Sir, I have a question. The recorded class. I'm coming. I'm going to send the recorded class to the YouTube, and I'm going to send it to you so you can still go through it again, go over it again. So thank you very much, everyone. If you are watching the YouTube channel, please kindly like, subscribe, and comment on the on the video if it's actually helpful to you. Thank you very much. So, what's your question? Okay, my question is: What is the best time frame to use for newbies? Okay, it depends. It depends on what you are trading. Do you understand? But okay. the thing is that there is one theory that you must know: higher time frame eh, has mm. higher probability of holding like uh, areas or zones marked out on higher time frames has higher probability of holding okay do you understand okay. than lower yeah, time frames okay. do you understand okay, you. yeah that's why support support or market structure that you that you draw on higher time frame is solid more than the ones you draw on lower time frame do you understand Okay, yeah. And it depends on the trader. If you are this type of that you that you swing, that is you know, I told you types of uh, traders too. I told you they are according to uh, trading, day trading, what type of we have swing traders, we have day traders. So swing traders they can hold for, for years, for months, for weeks, for days. But day traders, you are just trying to scalp in day trading. You see this one you scalp. <laughs> You scalp, do you understand? So, like day traders now, what they, they work with lower time frame most of the time. But scalpers, you that you want to hold something for like a longer days, it means you need to work to calm down and use higher time frame and wait for the market to want to pick you. Then before it now start going up, do you understand? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello, sir. I'm with you. Okay, sir. Um, I actually don't really have a question, but what I wanted to say is that for those of us that have the fee, the fifty dollars as at the moment. I, can we still chat you up to meet you? I can you hear you. Okay, I said for those of us that don't have the fifty dollars at the moment. Can we... Hello, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Uh, no problem. No problem. You have I'm with you. Okay, I said for those of us that don't have the fifty dollars. Can we still meet you up with her when we have the money? Uh, no problem. No, no problem. This is chat me. Chat me. So, thank you very much, everyone. See you next class.